Hey there. So today we're gonna study basic charting. So first we're gonna discuss ano nga ba yung nakikita natin sa isang chart and what to make out of these things. What's the value of studying charts? So first, to go to a chart, just go to investagrams.com and then click on the top right button. Then you can see the chart button here. So you can search for any stock that you want to look at. And in this case, we're looking at the stock Mega World. So first things, first, uh, ang una nating nakikita sa isang chart is yung galaw ng presyo, the price movement. So ito. So makikita natin dito yung yung history nung, nung stock. Ano yung dati niyang galaw, previous history. So from here, we could see na ito. From August, ayan no? Ito yung, ito yung time frame nun. From August up to 2007, up to the new year, January 2017. Yan yung galaw ng buong Mega. Yan yung galaw ni Mega World during that time period. So yun. So basically, by looking at charts, we're taking a look at the historical price and volume movement of the stock. So volume naman, itong nasa ibaba. So here, ito yan. Yung area na to. The green and red bars, these are the number of shares that are trading for the day, for each day for the stock. So, yan. So, ang tawag sa pag-aral ng chart is technical analysis. So, what do we make out of technical analysis? What's the idea behind it? The basic idea is by looking at the histo historical movement of a stock, you can gain a better understanding of its future movement. So, so, by looking at charts, ang tinitignan natin dito yung paggalaw ng presyo, eh, yung, yung actual trading. So, this depicts, this gives us an, an idea of the supply and demand of the stock. So, how is the supply and demand interacting? So, that dictates the price movement of a stock. So, today we're going to discuss candlesticks, trend lines, and support and resistance. So, what is candlesticks? What are candlesticks? Ito yung pinaka-base unit ng isang stock. So, ito, makikita natin, yung stock, yung chart na to is day charts. So, kada kandila, ito, yan. Yung mga green na yan, tumataas, tas bumababa. These are the candlesticks. It represents one trading day. So, ito. To visualize further, it shows you the high, the low, the open and the close of a stock. So, ito, makikita natin kung yung stock nag-open sa ibaba, Tapos tumaas At the end of the day Ayan, green yung katawan niya And then, ang tawag dito Yung linya sa taas at baba That's the wicks Ito yung top and the low of the range For that certain period Alright Tapos ito naman, yung red na candle Yung stock ng galing sa itaas So kunyari, 10 pesos yan nagsimula Nag-open Tapos bumaba siya to 9 pesos Ayan Kaya red yung candle Negative yung trading for the day so that though, that's the candlestick. Yan yung isang, it represents one time frame. So in this case, it represents one day since we're looking at the day charts. So now let's move on to trend lines. So yan, now na nag yung candles, it represents the actual price action, yung galaw ng presyo. But then, kapag hinayaan mo yung presyo gumalaw, usually it forms into trends. Yan, pag, pag malakas yung demand sa stock or malakas yung supply, kunyari, bulok yung stock, marami nagbebenta, babagsak yan. Pero kapag malakas yung demand, tuloy-tuloy lang yung buying, tataas siya over time. So, ang concept sa trend lines, to, in order to draw them, you, could, you can connect two low points to draw an uptrend. So, in this case, ito. Magsimula tayo dito, tapos yan, kinonect mo lang here, so, dito, nagkaroon tayo ng visualization na, uy, uptrend tong stock na to. So, it, it gives you a basic picture of the trend of the stock. And what's the value of trend lines? Now that we understand the trend, mapapansin nyo na kung solid yung isang trend ng isang stock, mag-hold yan sa trend line niya. So, mapapansin nyo here, dito, ayan, it acted as a support. So, trend lines act, acts as a support. So, kung intact talaga yung trend ng isang stock, usually, nag-hold lang siya dyan. So, pwedeng buying points dyan. Tapos, tuloy-tuloy lang siya pataas. Pero mapapansin nyo, anong nangyari pag nabasag yung trend line? So, ito yung trend line breakdown. So, at this point, noong August, biglang pumagsak na si Mega World from 360 nag-5 plus. Tapos dito, hindi na na-sustain yung trend. So, yun yung trend breakdown. So, pag nangyari yan, it signifies a reversal point. So, usually, tapos na yung trend kapag nangyari yan, warning sign. But here's, take note, 
trends uh, are not perfectly indicative. Kumbaga, hindi, you cannot use that as uh, as your sole criteria for buying and selling. So this is just a visual guide. Okay, so prices do not strictly conform to to trend lines. Kumbaga, hindi yan parating sumasakto sa trend lines. Kaya dapat uh, tinitreat lang natin yung trend lines as a visual guide, as a guide. So yan. So the the way I draw trend lines, you could just track the closing prices, yung mga katawan, yung body, open and closing yan. Pero some some prefer to use the wicks, yung top and low of the range. Doon nila minamarkahan. So depende sa yan. So just to simplify, we just connect the bodies. So yun yung uptrend. And ito naman, downtrend siya makikita nyo. Kinonnect natin yung dalawang highs. And again, hindi kailangan na sobrang strict ng trend lines. Ang importante diyan is you get the basic picture of the trend, di ba? So here, coming from the top here at 480 pesos, mapapansin nyo, nahirapan na si Mega World tagusin. Hindi siya makalampas sa downtrend line niya. Up until this point, parang nag-bottom siya. Tapos, uy, baka reversal na. Parang bumabawi na si Meg. So, ayun. So, the basic idea is you wanna ride uptrends and you wanna avoid downtrends. So, what happens naman pag yung stock is isn't going on a trend kapag ano lang siya kapag wala siyang direction so basically ang tawag natin diyan is range trading so pag nagre-range lang yung isang stock like ito let's take a look at this context markahan natin yung 5 pesos ng mega world dati mas dito naman mapapansin niyo 450 ayan nilagyan natin ng dalawang linya so 450 at sa 5 So, mapapansin nyo, anong nangyayari nun sa stock every time na tumama siya malapit sa 450? So, the stock bounces up, right? So, in this context, at this point in time, yan yung support ni Mega World. Okay? So, what does support mean? So, every time bumababa si Meg sa 450, maraming buyers or mas aggressive yung buyers at this level. So, perhaps inisip nila mura si Meg dyan. Kaya... Yung, kaya yung demand, no hold yung presyo at that level. So, significant yung buying at that point. Tapos ito naman, opposite side. Sa 5 pesos, anong nangyayari every time nag-5? So, yung support and resistance, ang turo ng textbook is, ang turo ng textbook is you can draw the, the highs and the lows. So, basically, tinatrack mo yung, yung, yung mga low point and high point na kung saan nauumpog yung isang stock. But then, Since prices are imperfect, kumbaga, para matansya natin yung talagang galaw niya, para hindi tayo ganun ka-strict, I prefer to draw boxes. So, dito, nakikita natin yung range ng isang stock. So, yan. May allowance. So, every time pumunta yung stock sa, eto, every time pumunta yung Mega World sa 5 pesos, mapapansin natin na naumpog siya. So, this case, tumagos, nag-5, 10, pero wala. Pagkatagos niya, hindi niya na-sustain, umpog pa rin. So, resistance level yan, yung 5 to 5, 10. So, mapapansin nyo, every time pumunta yan sa 5 to 5, 10, naumpog siya. So, al alam natin na at this point, mabigat yung selling. Mas agresibo yung mga sellers sa punto na to. So, resistance represents our supply. Okay? So, dyan, dyan mas malakas yung mga sellers. And then, our support represents your demand. So, ang basic trading strategy na ginagawa ng iba, buy low, sell high. Ayan, no? Every time bumili ka sa 450, 10% gain ka if mabenta mo near 5. 8 to 10% yan every, every swing. So, yan yung range trading na tinatawag. Kapag walang trend yung isang stock, buy low, sell high, rinse and repeat ka. So, kung ginawa mo yan, you could have gained uh, about 3 to 4 range trade opportunities during this cycle. So, ano namang, ano namang nangyayari? Kapag yung stock tumagos na dun sa range Like ito Hindi naman forever yan papasok lang sa 450 to 5 diba? So at one point Yung stock It's gonna move into its next direction So ito makapansin nyo dito Uy tumagos si Meg below 450 Nabasag yung support level niya So ang, ang ibig sabihin niyan Breakdown ng tawag dyan So ang ibig sabihin niyan At that point Biglang mas naging agresibo yung supply So perhaps may bad news, perhaps nagpanik sa global, whatever the reason, alam mo na kapag nag-breakdown yung isang stock, 
lumakas yung other side, lumakas yung supply. So, mas naging agresibo yung sellers. Kasi bin binagsakan nila yung buyers eh. Hindi na na-hold yung dating support level. So, usually, breakdowns, pag lumabas yan sa isang trading range, usually, it follows a price move. So, kung breakdown yan, it, it has a follow-up na down move. So, ito, in this case, bumaba siya ng 15%. Ayan. Tapos, pag breakout naman, pag nabasag yung resistance, breakout ang tawag doon. So, ito, hanap tayo ng isang example just to show the significance of a breakout. So, this is one of the main trades, one of the biggest trades last year, now corporation. So, dito, tatrack mo lang yung range ng stock. So, during this time frame, ayan, unang, ano nyan, unang resistance nyan nasa 9, 9 pesos. Pero, if you track the bigger resistance, it's around piso. So, by the way, support and resistance, usually, dumidikit lang yan sa round numbers. So, yan yung mga piso, 110, 120, 1.50, ganyan. So, kasi ano eh, tao yung mga nagtitrade, di ba tayo? So, oftentimes, people hook themselves to the simpler numbers, to whole numbers. Kaya nagiging significant yung galaw ng presyo sa mga level na, ano, na round numbers. So, in this example, makikita natin, anong nangyari kay Now Corp? Eto. Ayan. So, sa 60 cents, makapansin nyo, nag-hold na siya. Hindi na siya bumababa below that. So, that proves our support. And then, slowly, connecting the lows, makikita nyo, nag-higher low na siya. So, nag-start mag-trend. Pero, hindi pa nakakatagos sa pinaka-resistance niya, which is, which is around 1 peso to 120. So, ayan. Biglang, biglang pumunta ng 10 to. Biglang pumunta ng piso at this point. And then, nag-break out. Ayan, oh. So, sa punto na to, biglang nag-break out si Nao. So, what does that tell us? ba? So, sa, sa, sa previous na galaw ni Nao, wala siya. Wala siyang direction, basically. Parang sumasayaw lang. Pero at this point, why did it break out above 120? So, that tells you a lot about the demand. Tapos, makikita mo high volume. So, that's another clue. So, oftentimes, breakout yun nga, it indicates na nag-iba na, naging agresibo yung buyers enough to take out the supply, the previous supply, the previous resistance at that level. So, what's the importance of breakouts? So, here, pagka-breakout ni Nao sa 120, anong, na, anong mapapala natin? Kunyari, yung strategy natin, buy on breakout. So, from 120, umakit siya hanggang 3 pesos and almost triple your money, right? So, not bad in just two months. So, again, ito makikita natin. Pagka-breakout niya, biglang nag-trend up yung stock, right? So, breakouts often precede trends. If talagang legit yung breakout, hindi lahat ng breakout tumatama. Pero pag tumama yung breakout, nasaktuhan mo yan, pwedeng potentially ito na yung start ng trend, okay? So, that's the significance of breakouts. So, that's another strategy where you, you wait for the stock to just dance it out and then if there's a significant move, you suddenly buy.